بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا وفقا في الدين يا رب العالمين وفقنا للعمل بما يرضيك عنا وإلى غيرك لا تكلنا افتح أخفال قلوبنا بذكرك وألهمنا شكرك وجعلنا من أهل معرفتك ولا تجعلنا من الغافلين آمين We've reached almost to the end of uh, كتاب الأربعين في أصول الدين by الإمام الغزالي the 40 principles of the deen which is the summary of إحياء uh, علوم الدين is very huge book and very useful and, and it's an opening as well. So we started last time, or actually a couple of sessions ago, the last chapter, which is about uh, remembrance of death, Zikr al maut Al-Ghazali touched up on many things. Uh, today, inshallah, we will continue uh, the reflections on, on Al-Ghazali's uh, Remembrance of Death chapter, inshallah. So, Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, is addressing today, we'll talk about the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Gnostic people, or the people of deep knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their state, their connection, how do they see death and how, uh, and what does it mean death to them? So this is something Ghazali will take us through in this chapter, inshallah ta'ala. So he said here, Allah Ta'ala, that the perfect knowledgeable person about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, who's consumed, who consumed his time <clears throat> in remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he doesn't need to be reminded about death because his state is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to remember death to cut us off the dunya and to remind us about the akhirah. But this very person and the like of this person who's already in the remembrance of Allah, he's as if he's with Allah azza wa jal, although he's still alive, but because of his uh, heart, the state of his heart, the state of his remembrance. So he's always engaged in the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. So although he lives in the dunya, but he's with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ghazali is saying, of course, I'm paraphrasing Ghazali many times. Ghazali is saying, Rahimahullah ta'ala, this person. He doesn't need a reminder because he is in this state already connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, remembrance of death to him is not of use, to be honest, because he's already beyond this. And then he mentioned something very strange. I know this. Uh, uh, concepts now which I'm introducing from Al-Ghazali that the person who is engaged in the remembrance of Allah all the time he doesn't need to be reminded about death and the second thing as well the very strange thing to, to many of us he said that very person he, <clears throat> fear and hope disappear from his life why? He said, because fear and hope are, are two whips. 
used to bring the servant close to Allah Azza wa Jal. So if he's already there, so he has no fear because he's with Allah. He has no hope because hope distracts you from uh, being close to Allah Azza wa Jal. As we explained last time when Rasulullah Sallallahu drew on the sand uh, a rectangle and he drew a line from the middle of it goes outside uh, big time so it goes outside the borders of the rectangle And he mentioned that this very line which goes outside the borders, this is hope. And the border is the lifetime, i.e. our uh, age. So 50, 70, 80, 100, that's the limit. So your hope goes beyond that. So he's saying here that if he's so engaged in the remembrance of Allah, fear and hope are not exist. I know some of you will say, yeah, come on, what's that? But this is an exceptional case. Yes, this is not the common case. The common case, everyone has fear and hope, of course. But you have special cases, and Ghazali is introducing us to these special cases of him, Allah Ta'ala. And then he says, why do you remember death? Do you remember death? Because death cuts you off the connections with the dunya. If he's already disconnected, so he's already there. This is what he's saying. So when you are disconnected, so you are there. You don't need a reminder. Then he said, the al-arif, the knowledgeable person about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he already died. In which sense? In his relationship with the dunya. So he's treated the dunya as if he is a dead person, i.e. he's not engaging that much with the dunya, it's not in his heart, he's just dealing with it in his uh, hands and so on. So dunya to him is already like a dead person. And the rest of the dunya like um, family, money, this, that, and the other, as well, he's not so attached to them. He does his uh, obligations and fulfill his rights and what have you, but it's not controlling his heart like many of us. So his concern is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he disconnected himself from anything, even the Akhirah. So his concern is not the Akhirah, his concern is Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to understand what he's saying. And then he says, the only thing that he's not yet experienced is the real death. And this, needs the veil to be lifted because with death, the real death, the veil will be lifted and then the unseen becomes seen. So when the death arrives, this is what you've been trying to avoid. And, and another ayah Allah says, وكشفنا, وكشفنا We will lift the veil from your eyes. 
فبصاروا كاليوم حديد and your site is 10 over 10 today so you have a very strong site and you can see the unseen now but not before that and then Ghazali quoted uh, a statement from Ali رضي الله عنه لو كشف الغطاء ما ازددت يقينا if the veil is lifted my certainty will not increase so okay what will increase then as Ali says certainty will not increase because he is certain about death he believes in death. He believes in Akhirah. He believes in what Allah has promised, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this will not increase his certainty. But it will increase his clarity. And he gave the example of somebody who's behind uh, the curtain, very uh, blurry curtain. So he, he can see what's behind it, but not in clear vision. So he knows exactly and he's certain about what's behind the curtain but the images are not very clear to him so his certainty will not increase when you open the curtain or uh, but his clarity will increase and this is what he's saying then he said The remembrance of death is for those who their hearts are attached to the dunya. This is where the remembrance of death is needed, which is actually the majority, 99.99% let's say. So what Ghazali, Al-Ghazali rahimahullah is mentioning here is just the exception of the exception. So he doesn't exhaust his efforts in seeking the dunya because he knows that the dunya will not last. And then he quoted the hadith, which is not as usual, the majority of the hadith, uh, not very strong uh, narrations. So he said that Jibreel alayhi salam, Ruh al Qudus, inspired me that. Love whomever you want, you will leave them. And live as much as you want, you will die. And do whatever you want, you will be recompensed for that. Uh, Ghazali has mentioned this as well in another book, which is Risalat Ayyu al the uh, message to one of his students where he wrote to Al-Ghazali asking several questions. So Al-Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala uh, replied to that in a booklet, beautiful, nice booklet. We actually delivered this booklet in, in two occasions. One was uh, in a retreat and another one we delivered in a course. And the third time we delivered uh, more recently, a couple of months ago, in uh, the Arabic circle, which we have every Monday. Then Ghazali mentioned, uh, you might be longing to know what is the reality of death. And then he said, you won't be able to know the reality of death until you know the reality of life. It's like a riddle. <laughs> yeah, Ghazali is, he is a philosopher, by the way. And he, he wrote a book, probably a couple of books, a refutation of the philosophers, Tahafutul Falasifa in Arabic. So he, he went through the 
and philosophers books and he refuted their arguments about non-existence of Allah and this and that and uh, in, in a beautiful nice book the refutation of the philosophers uh, it's been translated to English different translations as well it's it's a nice book So he's saying you won't be able to know the reality of death until you know the reality of life. And you won't be able to know the reality of life until you know the reality of a ruh, the spirit which Allah created. Which is the most hidden and uh, unclear things because Allah stated in the Quran clearly in, in Surah Al-Isra وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْرُوحِ قُلِ الْرُوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّ they ask you concerning the spirit say it is from the command of my Lord so Ar-Ruh belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal all the creation of Allah has been uh, given spirits, ruh. Even you have the animals, humans, um, and so on. And in another ayah, Allah says, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ So the spirit has been breathed into us from Allah Azza wa Jal. And we see in the story of Maryam in Surah Maryam, uh, or as well in, in other surahs where Allah has mentioned Maryam in, in many surahs, uh, that Isa alayhi salam has been created by the word of Allah from be and it is kun fayakun and Jibreel came to Maryam and he blew in her this very spirit and Isa was created and the hadith uh, regarding the 40 days and 40 days and 40 days <clears throat> it says that after 40 days the spirit will be blown into him into the womb so again a ruh which is no one knows the reality of this except Allah Azza wa Jal. No human, no sciences, no microscopes, no AI, no nothing can know the reality of Ruh. And the scholars in Aqidah mentioned many times that because Allah Azza wa Jal has a special veil and He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, did not give us the knowledge of a ruh. So we cannot guess. We don't know the reality of it. So it comes from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It resides in the body. And through that, the body functions. So the light of it goes to the eyes you see, goes to the ears you hear, goes to the hands you move, goes to the heart, it beats, and so on. So when the, the ruh is taken from the body, and this very light, which is like electricity to the body, uh, is just 
shut down, stops its functions. And that's it. This is how we die. And it spreads in the body, in every single corner in the body, in every single atom, a ruh resides. <clears throat> but the body which we, we oh, it's carrying the ruh if you want, you have illness, you have sickness, uh, doctors can treat it, this, that, and the other. You have hunger, you eat, you are thirst, you drink, etc. It has nothing to do with the ruh, i.e. like the effect of the ruh. The ruh is like the engine which gives you the power and uh, the light but we see in, in many occasions that uh, like in Ramadan, which we are around 35 days from Ramadan now, nearly a month. In Ramadan, you see the, the control of the ruh over the body is more than any other month. Because of many things, number one, your, your intention is to focus more on what makes you close to Allah Azza wa Jal. And you put more efforts into this and your heart is, is more in, in tune with that and so on. So we see that the ruh is fed more in Ramadan and in spiritual activities, you feel that this is the food of the soul, not just the food of the body, which we have 24 over seven, 365 days a year. So it, it's an opportunity just to understand how we function. So Ghazali, this is part probably why he's introducing uh, this explanation to us to understand that a ruh is is as well so important. We need to look after it, and we carried the amana through our spirit, our ruh. And by the way, Zali is saying. The ruh will not die at all. Comes from Allah and stays forever. It will not die. The body dies, it goes to the grave, etc., but the ruh stays and goes to Jannah, inshallah. Some people, somewhere else, God forbid. <clears throat> and this very ruh either goes to happiness, everlasting happiness, or everlasting uh, punishment. And then Ghazali says, the dust, when somebody is buried, the dust will not eat the place of Iman. Because in your ruh, you have your Iman, not in your body. And your knowledge stays with you, doesn't disappear when the body disappears. So it's only a transformation, as Ali is saying. When one dies, it's a transformation from this station to a different station but you are still with your ruh. So you don't have the control over your hand anymore, but you are still you. You don't have the control over your body, but you are still you. Your knowledge stays with you, 
your good deeds stays with you, your bad deeds as well, and so on. And accordingly, the grave will be part of Jannah or part of hell. So Ghazali is saying, Rahimullah Ta'ala, that your body is like the net to the fisherman. You used to hunt the fish. So your body is like the net to, to capture the knowledge. And when you die, this net doesn't matter because you already captured the uh, fish. So you don't need it. But even you feel better without it because you are coming back now. You, you already done your job. So losing the uh, net, it doesn't mean that you lost the fisherman. No, the fisherman is still there, but he lost the net. So the ruh is still there, but the body is not there. And then Razali Rahimullah Ta'ala talks about those who did really uh, do their job properly. If he's a fisherman and you go and use your net and you choose the right time, etc., and you learn how to fish, etc., how to put your net properly, when to, to put it, how, how when to take it and, and uh, take it back. That's, that's that. Then he said, those who didn't do it properly, they will feel remorse. That we wish that we have used it properly. We wish that we have captured many fish. We used that, would, that we have done more, etc. After the body is dead, you can't do anything now. And this is why the ayah says, Rabbi rji'oon la'alli a'malu salihan fi ma tarak. They will say, our Lord, let us go back. We might do better if you gave us another chance. And Allah says, no. It's just the word he's saying. And there's a big barrier between them and what they are asking for. That's it. They are now lifted or they have transformed to a different world, which is, which is the Barzakh world. The world of the Barzakh, it's after, after death. You can't go back. You can't rewind. That's it. Done. You've been given your chance. You use it properly, then you won't regret. You did not, then you will regret. And that's it. <clears throat> then Ghazali says, Death is like the disease of the body. You cannot control, it takes over the body, but your soul is still there. And the more you are attached to the dunya, your senses attached to the dunya, your heart attached to the dunya, so the departure from the dunya will be so difficult. It will be torture. And because all the pleasures of the dunya, you only get through your senses, your, your, 
body, your hands, your ears, your eyes, and so on. So when you die, you regret all of this because that's that's your pleasure. You have no pleasure anymore. So if the dunya was your love, so you lost your love. Then Ghazali says there's no difference between someone has been transported from his beloved that he cannot see anymore or his eyes to be uh, blind. So both are the same to him because he can't see his beloved anymore. He's giving this example to show us, to, to show that uh, the body is not the important thing. What's beyond the body? So if your heart, your ruh is connected to Allah Azza wa Jal, so you don't feel the heaviness of leaving the dunya. You feel the lightness of leaving the dunya. Because dunya, in any case, wasn't your beloved. The contrary of many people. And he says, death opens the connection between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. So you don't have any barriers now. You don't have any distractions now. You don't have any... Uh, any attachments. So this is why death is not a bad thing for those who love Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is why in the hadith that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa. Whomsoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. So who loves to meet Allah, it means his concern, his focus, his heart, his life, his senses, everything is connected to Allah Azza wa Jal. So dunya is not his concern. So he's ready to leave any time. He's already packed and ready. But for many of us, may Allah forgive us, uh, we are not that ready person, no. We are so attached to the dunya. And we are still distracted by the dunya. So Ghazali Rahimullah Ta'ala is saying here, Your pleasure to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very connected to how much you love Allah Azza wa Jal. So if you love Allah much, you love to meet Allah Azza wa Jal much. If so, so, then you are not very ready to meet Allah and you do not prepare for that. And death is not on your list in, in the positive way, not the negative way. I.e. you are not prepared. Then Ghazali quoted an ayah from the Quran, Lahum, lahum fiha ma yasha'ul. Describing the blessings of the Akhirah and, and the blessings of Jannah, Allah is saying that they will get in Jannah whatever they want. That's it. So you wasted nothing. You lost nothing. Whatever you want, it's already there waiting for you. 
but it's a matter of time, matter of patience, matter of obedience and, and submission. You know, this very test, which has been viral for many years now, and they bring uh, two kids. Sometimes they do it with animals, but dogs or more likely, yeah. Uh, they bring two kids very young, two years, something like that. And they put whatever they like, for instance. They like chocolate, they like... Um, these kind of things. They put it in front of these two kids and the parents would say, of course, they are monitored by CCTV. They will say, okay, this is here for you, but don't eat it now. I will go a bit and come back. So when I come back, you can eat it. Yes, it's just in front of you. So you have the two kids looking at each other. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've seen this many times. For it's, it's funny, but it's, it's very useful to learn from. So a piece of chocolate, for instance, or biscuit or whatever it might be. Uh, in front of him or her, and they are looking at it. Their parents are not here, but they told them, don't eat it until I come back. Yes, it's yours, but don't eat it now. And you see, for instance, one of them more disciplined than the other, more likely. Uh, some, the, the first one will not eat it, for instance. He wants to eat it. He wants to put it in his mouth. But he's listening to the voice of his parents. Don't eat it. When I come back, we eat it. The other one can't, can't wait. You see, he can't wait. He take it and then he put it back and then he smell it. He then put it back. Mm, what shall I do? And then one, two minutes, he can't resist. He put it in his mouth. Sometimes they've done this many times. Yeah. Sometimes the, the, his brother or his sister will follow his lead. Sometimes he won't. Depends. So different cases, different scenarios. So this is the case. It's yours, but it's a matter of patience. You can eat it in dunya and not eat it in akhira. Or you can wait and you can get much better in the akhira. It's about listening to this voice coming from the divine call. Don't do that or do that and so on. So the, the bliss of the akhira is beyond your comprehension. Al-Ghazali says, and, and uh, people of Jahannam will be said to them, wa ma and there will be a barrier between them and between what they like. Because they already consumed it in the dunya. So they will not get anything they like in the Akhirah. Everything is the opposite. And people of Jannah, they will get what they desire. Lahum fiha ma So, as you can see, it's preparation to what Ghazali is taking us through here. It's just painting the picture of what will happen and giving us some examples to, to make us understand more and, and see, okay, how can I put this into perspective? How can I put this into uh, real terms and, and real action rather than just theoretical? <clears throat> so the less you are attached to the dunya the more you will be attached to the akhirah again in a positive sense not you, you, you want uh, to live in misery because you don't want to, to live in the dunya no it means you live in the dunya you just do your job but don't make the dunya in your heart
<clears throat> so when we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else, then preparation for the akhirah will be much easier. When this love of Allah Azza wa Jal is secondary, not primary love, then we suffer. So Allah's love has to be primary love in our love, not secondary love. When you have something competing with the love of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then there's definitely something wrong with this. And this is a recipe for uh, loss, big loss in the Akhirah. So the, the, the person who dies, his regret is double if his love is to the dunya, number one. Number two, if the only pleasure he gets is from the dunya, these two points makes him suffer a lot. But the opposite will be to the believer whose heart is connected to Allah prepared for the Akhirah. Number two, his uh, connection is strong with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or in Arabic, what we call the uns. So he has very intimate relationship with Allah, very dear, very close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is usually, um, this, it's a state of tahajjud and qiyamul layl and night supplications and dear relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. So his uns, the uns which he gets in the dunya is what makes him uh, prepared for the akhirah. So if you never tasted this uns from Allah Azza wa Jal, you only know the pleasure of eating and drinking and the like of it and, and having your favorite food or favorite stuff. And then you tasted nothing from the pleasures of the dunya. The real pleasure is not just a physical pleasure, eating, drinking, intimacy, and so on, no. Real pleasure is, is when you really connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah beautifully mentioned this in his hadith. He says, Inna ahadakum idha qama yusalli fa inna ma yunaji rabbah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of you, when he stands in prayer, in fact, he is conversing with his Lord. So this conversation is the real intimacy between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. What is more beautiful than talking to Allah and listening Allah's call? It's something beyond description. You just can, can live and feel. It's difficult to describe. So yes, this uns comes from knowing Allah Azza wa Jal. And this can only be felt through your ruh. From your ruh, you feel this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me pause here, inshallah, and open the floor for your question. I still have plenty to cover for next time, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan, Sheikh. Lovely to have you back on the Ghazali sessions and lovely to see so many people this evening. Um, if you have any questions, please raise your hands or put them on the chat. Sheikh, why is it that um, some people are more spiritual than others sort of from birth? Do they have a stronger ruh? Are they, or do we all start with the same ruh and some develop it better? Yeah, we definitely have the same ruh, but it depends on your uh, 
efforts, preparation, and, and the like of it, environment, uh, terbia, etc. Like anything in life, someone he's been brought up in a business uh, uh, environment. So he's very easy to get business and make business and run business and so on. And somebody is not into this, but can do business. Um, it probably it will take them more, etc. So it depends. Many things in in place, but yes, they have been given the same rule, but with variations of efforts and preparation and, and other things. And we've got a question on the chat, which is asking, is attachment to dunya, love of food and sleep? Part of it, but not everything. Yeah, it is. It is love of food and drink. If, if it's in a halal way, that's fine, but don't make this your main concern, i.e. eat, drink and sleep. This is not what we, we've been created for. We share this with the animals as well. They eat and, and drink and sleep and reproduct and what have you. So we share the same thing with them if you want. But we have been given the privilege to know Allah Azza wa Jal, to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, to spread his word, to, to be his servants. This is the privilege which we have, so we shouldn't waste and Sheikh, I think in previous sessions, we've looked at the effect of food on the soul and Azali wrote his book on the two desires. So food is a big part of, food has a big impact on the soul then, doesn't it not? Of course, uh, not just on the soul, on the body. You have, uh, the, the, the heavier you are, the, the uh, slower you are, if you want. So you need to be lighter, lighter from sins, lighter from uh, attachment to the dunya and, and the like of it. And I think people feel that when they declutter their homes as well, they feel lighter, they actually, from giving things away and having less possessions. Yes, but the thing is, uh, they give things away and they go and buy new stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's like addiction. You get rid of some and then you bring some more. Um, I'm not saying don't live the dunya. Live in the dunya, but not make the dunya live in you. Live the dunya, but don't let the dunya live in you. That's the problem. Do we have any questions? We have another comment on the chat. Yeah, which is... Um, I've been told by a few sources that the soul gets knowledge about its death 40 days before this fact. Is that true, Chef? Not really, no. Does the soul know 40 days before it dies? Does the soul Not get really. a message? No. We need a clear evidence on that, but there's no clear evidence. Sometimes, sometimes, this is not based on evidence, this is based on experience. Sometimes, uh, yes, uh, they feel that... Um, I came across this a couple of times. Um, he's finishing the unfinished business. He gathered his children. He uh, talked to them and they prepared them and something like that. And he was he was uh, not ill and not dying, if you want, but he felt something and probably a couple of months he passed away. Uh, some people as well, a uh, few days or a couple of days, they feel the presence of the angels in the house or in the hospital if they were in, in the hospital. Um, these are not the common things. So there's no clear evidence that 40 days um, is is like a warning for somebody uh, or uh, informing them that they will die after 40 days. No, nothing like that, no. 
Okay, just like with a fair share. And in terms of attachment to dunya, we've, um, I think you've mentioned previously that being attached to people is not bad, that's human. The issue is when that attachment conflicts with your obedience to Allah and when you're prepared to bend the rules to uh, advantage them. Is that correct? Yeah, of course. And you have obligations, you have duties, you have to fulfill these obligations and duties. But the problem is, as I've mentioned earlier, live the dunya, but don't let the dunya live in you. This is the problem. When the dunya lives in your heart, something, when you live in the dunya, something else. This is the, these are two different things. So when the dunya is offered to you on the plate, then your attitude towards it is that this is a tool for you to use for, for the betterment of others and not for yourself. It's easier said, said than done, uh, Aisha. It's just <laughs> easier said than done. Someone will say, yeah, I'm so strong and this uh, nothing will make me change. And they offer him the dunya. And let me see your, your strength. Let me see your power. Great test. So, it's not that easy. No. Okay. So if we have no questions and no further comments, that brings us to the end of this session. And uh, we look forward to your joining us again on Thursday. And also, if you're interested in joining our regular Tafsir class on Mondays and Wednesdays, which you can watch live or recorded. If you'd like more details, please email info at utrich.org. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, Aisha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadi wa alihi wa sahbihi ishma'in. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta al-sami'u al-alim. Tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawab ar-Rahim. Aghfir lana wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Aghfir lana wa li walidina wa li azwajina wa dhurriyatina wa shaykhina wa ahbabina wa ashab al-hukuk alayna. اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد واله وصحبه اجمعين امين الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته